the clay center, the next thing he does is he opens it up, sticks his hand right inside there, and he's opening up the well. Keep in mind, we are the clay, and he is the potter. Isn't it nice to know that when trials and tribulations are coming against you from this outside world, that God has a supporting hand on the inside? You know, James said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. God is shaping us from the wheel of life, that he might have us conform to the exact image that he desires, that we can perform the exact purpose that he's created us for. And sometimes that involves a little, you know, a little modification along the way. Sometimes he sees something he doesn't like and he cuts a little off. Paul said that we should glory in our tribulations because tribulation worketh patience. Patience experience, experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. If you don't want to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ, you need to allow, you need to partake of God's divine nature of patience. Now, if you've heard of Corey Tamboom, she was a Holocaust survivor back in World War II. Hitler was rounding up the Jews. And she found herself in a concentration camp. And this one particular concentration camp she was in had a terrible flea infestation. And as she was saying her uh, nightly devotions, her sister Betsy kind of remarked, she said, Corey, I heard you thanking the Lord for uh, the roof we have over our heads, for the fact that we didn't get a meal today, and, uh, and a couple other things, but I didn't hear you thank the Lord for those fleas. Why not? And her sister looked at her and said, oh, why would I thank the Lord for those fleas? I'm itching like crazy. You're driving me nuts. And her sister reminded her, she said, you know, the Bible says in everything give thanks. Well, Corey, the special lady, she said, you know, that you're right when I thank God for those fleas. Years later, as she's writing her autobiography, she's thinking back on that experience she had in that particular concentration camp. She realized, unlike a lot of the others she'd been in, she had a tremendous freedom to witness to others, to spend hour after hour reading her Bible, and just all those good things. Come to find out, it was the fleas. Those guards in that camp did not want to subject themselves to a flea contamination, so they just let the prisoners alone unless it was absolutely necessary. <laughs> What's the point? The point is, God isn't going to always show us why we should be thankful. Yeah. It's called faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? We just need to be thankful. Wow. And it's hard when you're going through diverse temptations, but we're to count it all joy. Wow. That's how you partake of God's divine nature. <laughs> okay. Isn't it nice to know when things are going against you from the out, from the inside, sometimes God's tearing you up inside about forgiveness or bitterness or rebellion. Sometimes that master potter, he's got both hands out there supporting you. Whatever it takes, the Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he is the master potter. He knows where you need support and when you need it and how much. And you need to just rely on him, casting all our cares on him and to be careful for him. Now this process has a momentum that builds up and there's a law of physics that's called the law of inertia. And that law says that a thing at rest tends to stay at rest and a thing in motion tends to stay in motion. And I think all the textbooks give the example of a, like a locomotive or a train, a heavy, big, long train. It's real hard to get moving, but once it gets moving, it's hard to stop. This process is just like that. And I'm going to whip through these last three stages. Here's a pot that was shaped on the wheel, just like that one, only this one is set up to dry. But that's the fifth stage, the shaping process. After the pot is shaped, he needs to go through three more stages. The first thing the potter does, he takes that pot and he puts it in the oven and bakes it and makes it hard. And not only makes it hard, but he makes it now where it no longer will dissolve when it goes into water. And that's important. Because the step after that, he's going to put a glazed coating on the pot. 
And he does that by dipping the pot in a bucket of water mixed with some other chemicals. And when he pulls this pot up out of the glazed bucket, it looks just like that. It's got a thin coating of glaze on it. Then he takes that pot and puts it through the potter's kiln for a high firing, and he comes out with the finished vessel. So what about man? Man, too, is going to go through a firing process. Now, all throughout the Bible, fiery trials are what God uses to symbolize suffering. You know, how does he purify metals? How do, how do people purify metals? Like by heating them up. That's when they remove the dross from the silver and so forth. There's a proverb that says that the uh, furnace is for gold and the fining pot for silver, but the Lord trieth the hearts. Mm -hmm. God's going to put you through some trials here, some fiery trials, if you're going to partake of his divine nature of godliness. And those trials are things that your flesh wants to do, and you just got to resist them. You can choose God's grace, and we have the precious promise. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. If God is faithful, and will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with that temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. That's one verse of scripture, and there's five precious promises in that one verse. That's very comforting. No matter what you're going through, someone else has gone through it, and even if they hadn't, he promises you he won't put you through something you can't handle. Boy, if you're going through something hard, how can you be thankful to God? You can because he said it's for your good, and you're going you're to make it through it, or I wouldn't put you through it. Yeah. That's how you can be thankful to him. Once this thing is fired and you're partaking of God's divine nature of godliness, we need to have a protective coating on us. Just like that clay pot, our protective coating is called righteousness. All throughout scriptures, garments are likened to righteousness. Job said, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. In Ephesians 6, uh, Paul is listing the whole armor of God. And you might recall he mentions the breastplate of righteousness. It's a clothing. So just like the pot needs to be clothed, we too need to be clothed. It's not our nature, not our sin nature, to do acts of brotherly kindness. Because the truth of the matter is, our nature is me first and others second. And it shouldn't be that. Now that you got that acronym joy. Jesus first, mm -hmm. others next, and yourself last. That's the way it should be. We need to yield our supposed rights and yield to God's perfect will for our lives. We need to be willing to do what's right. In those acts of brotherly kindness, we can just partake of God's divine nature. Finally, turn to uh, 1 Peter and we'll look at charity. While you're turning there, I'm going to tell you what Paul said in one of his epistles. He said, above all, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Now, when the potter fires that glaze onto that pot, that glaze is no longer just a coating on the surface. It's literally bonded to the pores. It soaks in in a high fire stoneware, and it just bonds to it. It becomes part of it. And this whole process, charity is that bond. Paul just said, above all, put on charity, which is the bond of Perfectness. But if you're in 1 Peter, look in chapter 4, verse 8, and you see Peter said almost the exact same thing. 1 Peter 4, 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Boy, that sounds good. Yeah. Look at verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Verse 14, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. And that's the truth. We have opportunity to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. The difference between these two firings? This first one, stage six, that's not as hot. That's not as hard to endure. And the reason being, is we're suffering for our own flesh. Something we feel, you know, hey, I had that coming. I've got these desires, and I've got to try to push them down. 
up here, this is tougher. It's harder. Why? Because now you're suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're suffering because you're doing things out of pure motives, just because you love God. Or maybe just because you fear Him. And believe me, 